Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 75. We're recording this just like always for those that aren't here. It's a pretty small group, just Bob, Sean, and I. So we're going to go through. I think everybody else saw how many bugs we have to triage, and so they're like, I don't know if I want to show up this week. This won't be a six-minute meeting. This will not be a six-minute meeting. Although we are missing John, our, our, our plus one or minus one man. So, Sean, you're going to have to thumbs up or thumbs down when we actually say something besides just Bob and I talking at each other's. I love it. All right, let's not waste any time because we have a lot of triage and we want to ship this Wix 310 thing. We need to get through these and see if there's anything scary. 19 bugs. I didn't hit refresh just yet, but I'm sure we'll see how it goes. All right. This is old, five months ago. Oh, yes, this we left open for a while. I forgot. Where did we end up with this? Oh, we ended up with an example. Oh, good. Well, maybe. Oh, is that it's all of Wix that's here that targets? Oh, I solved my issue. The issue is the MS Build is Zek task handling the long pass. That breaks the command line into arguments, and the failure is caused by having a single argument which is too long by itself. Interesting. All right, so the exec task. All right, then. Fixed in votive directly. I've lost my mouse cursor. Lovely. Directly as a workaround for a known issue. I don't understand. Oh, this. All right, then. Um, so it looks like someone has tracked down the whole thing. I see. So instead of semicolons, he did. Oh, it doesn't exact command. All right, cool. So I say we take this in the future. Um, um, exact task for long paths. All right, cool. I don't think we need to take this to 310. I think this has been broken this way for a long time. Uh, yeah, not a 310 issue. Cool. So we can put it in 3x and come back. We have enough other bugs to dig into that we need to do that. That works. Um, he changed it to to fix to open the untriage. Uh, I think there is a pull request in Wix 4 for that. Oh, okay, cool. I just missed that. They should have just left a comment to not change this because it's not fixed until it's fixed. Can we mark this not fixed real quick and then sure. maybe point at the pull request so it's no confusion? Um, or yeah, less confusion. Oh, one in Wix 4 as well, or Wix 3 and Wix 4. Cool. So, but we weren't going to take it in 3 because it's breaking. Is that correct? Mm. Um... That's interesting. All right, let's just put all the information in the bug and we can revisit the. Uh, yeah, it, technically it's potentially breaking because. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Yep. The whole not here. Here. Yep. So we'll, we'll take the one in four and we'll decline the one in three and it'll be good. Um. Burn overwrites logs when retrying an MSI file. Yes. Um, we should uh, append. We should do logging with appending. I haven't tried doing that through the API in a long time, but it should work. Yeah, it's just another flag. Isn't it? So, yeah, we should do that. Uh, this is a great bug to take in 3x. I think it... It's not breaking, right? Worse that happens is you get more log file than you used to. That's a good thing. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And bug feature? Yeah. Feature. Cool. 20 type initializer type system URI through. Ugh. Oh, something yeah. in heat. This is something in heat. Um, and... Oh, it's not project. Uh, okay, that's a little bit more disturbing. We did have a change in heat for 
for project harvesting uh, in 310. Um, I don't I don't recall that we did anything that would affect, you know, file harvesting though. So that's concerning. Um, uh, there's an XSLT, which I'm not fond of. Yeah, although this is inside heat in the mutate mutate files somewhere in the URI in the mutate files is unhappy with whatever value it found yeah so type initializer for system URI parser through an exception whoa URI parser all right well, the notice the file load exception there in the nested. Mm hmm Oh my. That's that's concerning. This is not good. Type initializer for this through an exception. Oh it threw oh, something inside through an exception. Right. I see. And bad things happen. Well, my concern is the file load exception. It couldn't load system. System.dll was invalid. That's not good. So this might have been related to the change. Unfortunately, I don't know how, you know, this is going to be one of those things we have to fi fix as well as we understand it and then hope that we get uh, someone to take a, you know, the original reporter to take another look. Or declare victory. And just solve to, it again well, next time. Hopefully to declare a victory, yeah. Well, I mean, we do what we have to do. Um, type initializer for end log comment internal through an exception. Okay. So this is attempting to load this assembly and prob and her and um yeah, do the normal assembly harvesting. Do the normal, yeah, exactly. And log dot exe. Um, heat fails with type issues. It's a warning. Tell you the diagnosis failure. So the problem is actually in N log being unhappy. So it's like this N log thing doesn't like being loaded. I don't think this is anything we did. I don't think this is new. I think this has probably been there forever. Um, like if you did this with any heat, it would work. Yeah, but N log's really common. It it's hard to think we, yeah, wouldn't already have run into this at some point. Yeah, well, it's possible that people like have their configuration file in the right place or something like that. Or it's possible that this, you know, somehow this comm thing is logging, attempting to log while it's being called to register an assembly. Or doing something like in a static constructor or something. <laughs> Who knows? Right. What would cause it not to be able to load system? Well, that I don't know, but that's coming from inside end log. Con configuration errors. Configuration system failed to initialize. It's something inside end log. A mismatch of CLR, it's possible. The error message from 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 um, heat is pretty. Cool. The error, yeah. So this file is non assembly. You can ignore this warning. Otherwise, this error detail will help you diagnose the failure. It's something inside their assembly. They need to. I think they needed to debug it and go figure out why unlog is unhappy. I mean, so are, it, it will heat. I'm trying to figure out why this why this 
Well, analog's actually getting run. I, I don't know what the how the assembly harvest. They have. Is. They're attempting the heat on a com component, which ha includes a reference to analog.exe. Right. So it has a if it's a com component that's an assembly that has a reference to analog, it's going to try to load it. Aren't we loading? I actually I now I have no idea if the CLR can do this. Aren't we loading the assembly just to get metadata out? No, no, not for this. Oh. We do that in right. Wix, but not here. This is actually going to try to load the assembly and execute an entry point on it. All right. Which means okay. that the, the the assembly has to work. And in the environment that Heat is launching it, it's not happy. Okay. Well, obviously, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, yeah, look here. It's actually, you can see it, end log, turn off logging, then it does a log info. At, at the very bottom, I, my mouse cursor's gone. On process exit, turn off logging, it looks like it's calling info. It looks like it's actually logging something. Yeah, you see that third line from the bottom there? Yeah. So that could cause end log to be actually logging something, which would mean then it would open its configuration and do all the work that it has to do. And there's the app domain wrapper on process exit. Yeah, so this is a thing inside end log. Then at the bottom, we can see it. You can see end log fake little app domain wrapper on process exit. So it's logging something as we shut down the app domain that we created to put this thing in to tell it to go do its to start. So. This has something to do with n log being logged inside heat. And so someone inside n log would be able to look at that and go, oh, yes, well, this has to be true for you to be able to do logging. And then you'd find out, well, heat doesn't do that, because why would it do that kind of thing? We're doing something interesting. Okay. That App domain wrapper on process exit. Don't do that. I can see them. No, I don't know. Um, so, I I think they should probably follow up with. This is definitely an interaction with n log inside heat. Um, it's possible there's something that heat's doing to make it upset, but you're going to have to start with n log and work out, I think, at this point, given that last line down there. Especially internal fakeables, app domain wrapper on process exit. It's interesting. So I would resolve this as, you know, Go hunt this down with n log, and if there's something that we need to add to our app domain to make this work in heat, we could look at doing that. But at this point, it's like, or make n log happy such that it can log while being loaded in heat, which probably means some crazy app config thing that you'd have to do that I don't know how hard that would be to do. Cool. So I think we should send this and say, go look at n log, because it's n log that's upset about how it's being loaded in here. And come back if we yeah. know. And, well, and okay. th they should be able to take the stack trace, look at this repro with the N-log code and go, oh, N-log is crashing like this. You didn't do X, right? And it could be that X is set something correctly in your app domain or who knows what, right? Which that would be a heat problem. Or it could be, oh, yeah, you don't have your config file in the correct location. And that would again be, a, oh, well, heat loads, you know, these things from this directory. Oh, well, our config file is not in that directory, therefore we have to get a config file, otherwise all this stuff fails. But this is something down in n log first. Or don't use n log when you're harvesting at this point. A reference to n log.exe is kind of interesting. I didn't, don't know if that's normal or not. It sounds unusual to have a reference to n log.exe, but maybe that's the way they do things. So, no. Yeah, I don't either. So I would say they should go take this at n log first and work their way back up to heat instead of starting at heat and working their way down to n log. 
Uh, okay. I'll try to come up with an actual resolution there. Colonel. Line time variables failing after migrating from 3x to 4x. Oh, all right. We can open this in 4. 4 0. Um, you can toss it at me or just open it. There's a few open bugs in 4 that we'll have to go through. But I guess it doesn't surprise me that this doesn't work. Something has to be broken. Okay. Bootstrapper hangs when detecting files in use. With display internal UI. Ah, oh, yes. Don't we already have a bug on this? I don't know. This sounds familiar as in something that we've done. It sounds like one of those things that probably doesn't, it's probably very hard to do correctly in internal UI. Yeah, I do have a vague memory there. There's a bunch of uh, weird messaging things because of... Yes. We're probably getting stuck on some thread that's not pumping messages or something. Right. So, uh, yeah, we can open this in 3x because this isn't going to be new. Um, and uh, the workaround is to not use display eternal UI until someone figures out how to fix these sort of things. But, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, is this realistically something we're going to fix in three? If it's not too hard. Well, sorry, I guess that's my implied question. I don't know how hard it is. I don't okay. know. It could be as simple as a, oh, yeah, you know, we're filtering out some messages and some message pump we didn't realize, or something. I don't know. You know it's like, oh, okay, well, that's easy fix. We can start doing that. Or it could be hard as, yeah, you have to re-architect the whole threading thing because they need to pump messages somewhere or something. Who knows? It works for message boxes, which I guess, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the, so the whole display internal UI, hey, one more issue inside display internal UI. I wish I could say I'm terribly surprised, but I'm not. Unable to open Wix project in Visual Studio if Harvest Directory contains MS Build property included. This sounds familiar too. Yeah. Do we have a bug on this? Oh, I think we do. This just sounds familiar. Create folder nodes sounds really familiar. Maybe that's why. Yes. There is a bug open on this already? And it is from Shell. All right. Uh, dupe. That works. Bootstrapped. Bootstrapped. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Doesn't respect BS def bush button style. Hmm. No, I assume this is the theme util doesn't support it? Yeah. Does not become the default. All right. Yeah, I, there, I think there's more you have to do. Rather than just marking something default? Yeah, I think... Do you have to make it the first uh, in the tab order or something? No, I, you, have to just, you have to handle it, because usually that would be up to the default dialog proc. Oh. Windows, Windows yeah. don't get default that buttons. Right. Well, sounds like something we should open in 3x. Yeah, you don't get that for yeah. free? All right, so Theme Mutal should handle that at some point. Cool, 3x. Bootstrapper should utilize action text table. It can't. In a custom theme, adding a text field name, execute progress action data text shows the ugly action names. If the MSI defines user-friendly action names in the action table, it would be great to show these. The bootstrapper shows whatever MSI sends us. So yeah, I would expect action text to 
it already in that case. It does what it does. Now there may be other actions that you get the Well, we can't utilize action text table because we don't have access to that. Um so Well and which one would we use in a full chain? Yeah. No, the so we're processing MSI messages that come along. MSI messages are processed by action text. So uh they need to go and see what the MSI is doing in there and see if they've actually got their action text table hooked up correctly or not. Um, this isn't going to, burn isn't going to be able to do anything here. Now we could do more in the BA potentially to filter out more characters than we filter out. I don't remember. Does Wix standard BA chop off the beginning of the action message? I forget. I don't know. I remember someone talking about doing that, but I don't remember if anybody actually did the work to do it. Um, so, so anyway, the answer is that we display whatever MSI has formatted the action text as, and certainly could look at with SAMBA formatting that better based on the string it gets, but there's nothing more that burn can do there. Right? That makes sense to me. Yeah, so... If they want to discuss this, we could go back on Wix users and discuss what they've done or not done and what they're actually seeing. Yes, 2015 build, installer build fails. Unable to execute transform. Hmm. Right. This is, uh, this oh, is a custom project. It works in 2010. Yeah. Huh. A custom oh, project? No, it works in 2013. Sorry, 2013. Not in 2015. Yeah. I wonder what changed. Yeah. Um, this is a highly customized project. It does a bunch of project harvesting and then a bunch of uh, XSL, tra XL, uh, XSL transforms and some additional uh, custom tasks. I don't know if it's going to be possible to reproduce this without reproducing this, you know, pretty thoroughly. An error occurred at blah, 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 blah. Unable to execute transfer. What's printing this message out? I have no mouse cursor, so I'm not going to be able to grab this thing. That's close. Oh. Oh, text, cool. And the assumption is that this is heat that's spitting this message out? Heat? What? Sorry, oh. this error message. I don't know. Uh, that seems like a bad tag. Yeah, but what's spitting out this error message? MSB3703. Heat. Heat is doing it, you think? Oh, wait. Well, sorry. What are you seeing? I'm looking at the log file. Can you share that? Uh, let's see if I can just stick sorry. it right here. Boom. I've lost my mouse cursor now. Um, down here, line, the last, you know, bottom three lines. Unable to execute transformation, execution, da 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 da, da. So the assumption is that this is coming from Heat. Which seem which would be unlikely because usually heat spits out something more useful, right? Well, it spit oh out wait, no, no, you're right. This is MSB. I just assumed it was. Uh, no, 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 heat. no, this is us. This is the heat message. Yeah. Can you open the project? I can try to grab it. <laughs> Work on your cursor, foo. Dude, I'm getting good at this. Scarily good at this. Okay. Hey kids, this is how you debug at home. All right, where am I looking at? Line six four one. Oh, sh I don't have lines in here. I'm gonna take it over here where I have an editor. Sure, I can, I can help with that. Get... 
It is heat, from a heat project. It is from a heat project? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, no, there's X... Wait, no. Da, 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 da. No, they... Oh, that's interesting. Six, there's a bunch four, of... Four, one. But they had this XSL transformation thing after it. Right. XSL project output. Error occurred at that. Well, that sounds like something they passed the heat, doesn't it? Well, now that I don't know. No, they have an XSL transformation. Oh, is XSL transformation is a separate element? Yeah, that's not that's heat. not heat. And in fact, la, 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 I'm looking at all the attributes. I don't see any XSL transform passed in the heat project. Yeah, this is so they're else. harvesting, and then XSL transformation is what's yeah, they should doing have some, that thing. Yeah, so they should go look at their XSL transformation task. That's not ours. Yeah, right. XSL transformation is a build task. I agree. And it's not ours. For those of you that want to play along, where are we at? Yeah, we're looking at this kind of code. Can I select one? No. Ah, I got one. Nope, almost. A little more. There it is, that one, right? I think it's that one in particular. So yeah, not our bug. I'm going to bet this isn't our bug. They should go look at XSL transform, which isn't us. Because we don't spit out messages like that. And if we did, we should fix it. But even in our flashes, we spit out better messages than that for MS Build. Yeah, and the odd thing is that I don't see any any additional imports. Mm -hmm. So maybe it could be a thing built into MS Build. Is that what you guys are saying, Sean, John, that this is a built-in MS Build task? Or is it a custom one? I don't know. Oh, it is. Look at that. So they broke XSL Transform in Visual Studio 25? Yeah, good. Anyway. 25? It's 2015. Oh, jeez. I give up. Their, their numbering has is, is thoroughly hosed me. Anyway, yeah. uh, not a Wix thing. They should go follow up with the Visual Studio team that owns that thing. Fun. Dar Ice Cube cannot be found. Error pops up randomly. Okay. Uh, this is the weird shadow thing. Yeah, they have some weird shadow thing going on here. So who's copying it to that weird shadow thing? Yeah, that's the question. Please advise. Go figure out what in your build system is creating a shadow build for whatever assembly it is and do that. It looks like they shadow copied light.exe to an assembly location, and light's going to look for darice.cube right next to it. <laughs> right, right. So, so stop what, shadow copying light. What triggers that? I don't know why you do that. For a second, I thought it was the same people. They both start with K. I thought that it was maybe the same person with the crazy customized build. But, yeah, no. I don't know. So I, I would respond to them, go, you know, respond externally. What's copying light.exe to that shadow copy thing? There's nothing that we have that should be doing that. And the fact that other people don't hit this, and it's been around for so long, means that they've probably done something interesting. Interesting. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. How are the, the question to them is how are you getting light to be underneath that path? <laughs> what have you done to make that do that? That's a really long path too. Yes, that won't help. No, dangerous things to be doing. Don't do that. Migrate burn design documents to the project site. Yes, let's accept this, and then Heath can get the. Things over. I think he just needed that for his whip. So we should totally take 4838. Yes, and 
three eight. Three eight is that what he did? Yeah, okay. let's just take in three X. Yeah, we'll take it. Um I don't care. Yeah, sure, three X. So this this regression networks degradation when checking remote payload hash. Is this for the layout thing, or to make sure that layouts are faster? When adding the check to make sure that the payload discovered relative to the bundle right is the right payload by checking the hash. Right. We did this for layout. I wish this referred to the bug that we had that we we discussed this. Um, we should rip this out of 3.10 before we ship if this is if we're actually doing this now. We should not be checking. Sorry, I, I'm I'm sitting here. I don't I don't I have no idea what this is. So the problem here is that burn doesn't check the payloads that are next to it. Um, to verify that they're the correct payloads in layout, I believe. Uh, or it never did, right? Which means that if you did a partial layout and then some file got updated and you did another layout or whatever, you could get, or you got a corrupted file, burn wouldn't, would just look and say, oh, the file's here, I can skip it instead of copying it again, I think. And somewhere along the line, it says that there's a hash check such that we verify that the files that are next to the bundle are the correct files before we copy them to the temp, which we should not be doing. Like, we should not we should not check the files that are next to the bundle. We should not, we should not, we should not. So if we took Sorry, this, because, because it, it might be on a network share and that yeah. would be really slow to check. Okay, or, so a CD, copy it. or a DVD, which is sure. horribly slow. So we copy it to temp and do the same verification, hash verification that we do when we're copying payloads. Yeah, we, there's no point in copying this multiple times, essentially is what it comes down to. Yeah, okay. And so there are there is a scenario such that if the file next to you is the wrong file, that we would have to throw it away. And in a layout, I think that the goal was to be able to figure out that a file that you had done a layout on was wrong and overwrite it in the layout. Because there's some interaction between the normal of the burn, just trust the file that's next to it, and then does the whole payload verification later, and the layout code going, oh, the file's already here, I don't need to get it. Which is, that's, you know, that was the bug. And if the fix was to verify the files locally, that was bad. And so if we have this code in 3.10, because it wasn't in 3.9, if we have it in 3.10, we need to rip it out. Because it's going to be bad perf. We're going to get all kinds of problems from people if this is real um, in 3.10. Yeah, there it is. Look, Sean is awesome. Of course, I can't click on it because it's... Three zero six zero three zero six zero. Yep. Can you scroll down. When was it fixed? Oh, all right. Fixing three six forty fixes it. Okay. So yeah, this bug needs to come back out if that's really the problem. Yeah, and this came from Genia. This is that this is yeah, one of the first burn bugs from a long time ago from the Windows SDK guys that were like downloading our our oh and it's resuming is actually what it wants. Yeah. Yes. The whole layout is downloaded. That's right. Except only the updated should be downloaded. This is a perf improvement, right? So we took the perf improvement here, and if this happens, what I think is happening, then we took a huge perf hit on normal installs, which of course is a horrible trade. I will trade slash layout perf for real perf any day. Normal installation perf. Bad trades. And then I must have missed that way that it was working. So we we're going to have to go through and find it because the links that are in the bug are not the right links. 
the links at the bottom. Yeah. These are not the right commits. I don't think so. I could be wrong. Well, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I'd have to look at it in more context. Do not re-download package. Just restart it. Yes, this isn't a problem, right? I don't think so. Yeah, this just considers the layout directory as one of the things. Yeah, I don't see anything in here about you know, verifi hash verification. All right, well, <sighs> crap. I'm just going to have to take time and go do this. I'm going to have to go create a bundle and check this. Can we put this in 3.10 for now? Or should we open a new bug? What would the new bug be compared to this one? No, I'll just take it to do. Let me just go write it down somewhere. Wait, you want this bug? No, I don't want this bug. I'm not really thrilled about the check of the path is UNC. Well, that won't do any good for if you ship it on a DVD. So that's not oh, sufficient. I, right, and that's his next comment. Using IO kittles to look for drive type. Oh, actually, just drive type would do, wouldn't it? Should do, although things will lie at you, but yeah. can't lie at you. They don't always do. And actually, should the behavior be different? I'm sorry. Should the behavior be different? No. Based on media type. No. That's why I'm I'm not really thrilled about this bug. Every which way we're talking about. Let's leave it on triage for now. Okay. And we'll wait for Heath to show up another week, and I will go, I need to go check this local payloads before next week and all kinds of things. It's really going to bug me if this slipped through and I missed it, because this is, what they describe here is exactly what you don't want to do in the design, so I'm really hoping we didn't do that. Anyway, we will, I will dig into that. Let's leave it open for now, and we'll come back to it. Okay. Linker not resolving address when using VS2015. Uh, okay. When I rebuild Sushin 20 or VS2, I get the ICE 69 and ICE 80. All right. But under VS. Pro <laughs> Today I tested with 310 on VS2013. I get the ICE. I get the same ICE 89 ICE. 80 errors. The results are going to have to not seen related to changes in VS2. I don't understand how... Cha what? I'm so confused. What is this guy doing? I don't know. Um, but the, the results seem to be that his app doesn't work, and that's my suggestion to try to diff. There's actually a diff tool as a, uh, a, a, a DTF sample. Yeah. I'm thinking we need to build it and ship it because this would actually be kind of handy. Just run diff and see what's different. Um, but you know, obviously there, you know, the the 69. I don't know. I'm not sure where 89 comes in. How would these be different? Like, it's not like Wix is different in the community, 2015 community and 2013 and all that. Um. Yeah. Yeah, same versions. RC. That the um, PRN inst entry point points to a null reference. But when start it get oh it installs. Oh, but when it starts it points to a null reference. <laughs> well it Right, so he has a registry that has a value that points to that and uses 64-bit. This sounds like his code's not right. I don't understand how this would be us. Linker not resolving address. What is that? Ignore, ignore the title. 
Mr. He's saying his app doesn't run. That, that, okay. That's, I mean, he's saying the app doesn't well, yeah, run. Well, it could be that because he's, he's got a reg, he's got a component that's going across components. Make sure they're in the same feature. Well, and that usually that's yeah. a warning. That usually means they're in the same feature, right? Right. Warning. It's a warning when they're in the same feature. So it's that's probably you know. Except that it could be that it's already safe. installed, and then it can do weird things. Errors. Is, yeah, this this is not a bug. This guy needs to go with a log file and and his source code and walk through all of his issues. Yeah, so uh, this is not his, a bug for us. His follow up, his follow up is that it works now. So I don't know why, but he needs um, to fix his warnings and errors and at least understand them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if he needs help, he can he should go to Wix users and ask questions. And no, there's nothing in there that's a bug for us. The dynamic burn bundle. And then execution. Oh, yes, right. The ability to change this and all that is cumbersome. Instead of publishing a plain MSI, I have more control. Yeah. Within. So why don't you just ship new bundles all the time? That's I just require you to rebuild your entire bundle. It's true. That's the downside. Although, if you're... But it also allows you to fix the engine should something go wrong in the engine. Yeah. Well, if you're relying on, on dynamic updates, you're probably going to be fine with all of your packages being downloaded as well. So... Then your bundle should be really small. And we, the bundle updates covered this solution nicely. Right. So I think that's his answer. I, I mean, I understand people want this. I want to just change a data file instead of changing the bundle. But the problem, of course, is that now we have a, a an installation engine of sorts that has to be backwards compatible across all these changes and stuff like that. Versus, you know, we just ship the engine with the install. And if you have, if you need a newer version, go get a newer version of the engine and just install it. Works fine. And you don't need to add on bundles. You could just change the definition from A B to D and then go. Plus, we don't have to worry about all the security of signing things and stuff like that. We just use the bundle. The bundle's our whole security signature. That's the design. So so dynam tell them we have it. We have dynamic bundle updates. Just update your burn bundle. Just online. I should write the blog entry about that. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, I, I keep saying it, but I haven't written it down. I really should write it down. All right, the install button for installing Wix stays invisible. Oh, this probably is true, <laughs> right? I, it works in 3.9. Interesting. So they went back and tried to install 3.8, but there was a 3.9, and the install button disappeared? And that button vanishes afterwards. Yeah, I knew there were update button issues. What do we do with this bug for 3.8? Verify it works in 3.10? I don't know what's wrong. Well, it says the install button disappears. Well, sorry, I know that. Why? It just disappears because there's a 3.9? The feeds were separate, though, right? Yeah, there's... Mm, no, 3 is... Oh, yeah, they are separate. They are separate for minor versions. The update button vanishing happens whenever it can't connect to the internet and all kinds of other things like that. That's never been great, but I've never seen it install. The install button disappear. Um, the only time I've seen it is when I blogged about it when we switched the 310 versioning. You have a, a later version on the machine. It's the only ah. time I've seen that. Ah, a later version of the install is already on the machine. The install button disappears. Oh. So that's how we say, uh, no, go away. You already have it. <laughs> you cannot install this? It's not a great way. We should replace it with something else. But yes, okay. Um, so I guess the answer to him is uh, check to see if you had a newer version of uh, the installer already installed and or something. <laughs> I just and reprode it. That's how 3.8 works. Okay. So that's three eight. And and did we change that in three nine? Three ten? Three, yeah, so 
three nine the Jacob up, update there. button changes to up to date. Right. Not great yet. Still kind of wonky, but at least there's some text that says what's going on. And the install button never disappears. It does disappear. Oh. Oh, the install so, button disappears. In three eight, the install button and the update check button disappear. Ah. Uh, so that's pretty bad. Um, 3.9, the install button disappears, and the update button changes to up-to-date. The install button disappears is interesting. We should replace it with something. <laughs> with the newer version installed, right? Is basically what we're trying to say. And then click it to exit. Don't make it clickable, but yeah. <laughs> Whatever, yeah. You know me, I'd be happy if we just went with Wix standard B on that one, but... Instead of the crazy thing that we have? Instead of the crazy thing that makes it really hard to add little touches like that. Yeah, I, I hear you. But it serves its other purpose, but I hear you. Yeah. So, yeah, how about we take this in... Uh, let's do this. <laughs> let's take this in 3.11 and give it to Jacob, just because he's not here. Um <laughs> And and let's see if we can come up with a good story for it that we're happy with. Okay. Because the button disappearing is probably a little disorienting. And Jake will be like, how do I get a bug? And be like, that's what you get for not showing up. No. But yeah. All right. Wix account administrators does not work as expected when using it for permissions inside a merge module. Okay, so you refer to it from in a merge module. You're in a merge module, you refer to it, so the linker ends up bringing it in, right? I'm assuming that uh, when I did all those, I marked them as uh, suppressed modularization, although it's entirely possible. Oh, uh, I mean, when whoever did it, did it. <laughs> uh, yes, those are actually not marked suppressed modularization. Uh -huh, funny. Okay. Well, then I guess that makes sense that this is kind of screwy. So, yeah. 3X, unless we want to bring it in. Sooner. Not in 3.10. No. Sorry, sooner. 3.11. <laughs> yes, this was... Well, those have been there for seven years. Mm, is it that old, or is this the newer ones? But I forget, yeah. Well, Wix account administrators is... is um, I, I don't remember how old it is. At most... It is at most... Uh, sorry, it is at least six years old. Cool. And more likely seven, so three X. Yeah, I'm fine with that. IS ten support conditional version detection. I have a text that does that. Ah, uh, you are comparing strings, my friend. That will not work. That will not work. Don't compare strings. I'm sure the IS major version is that from us probably? We probably do that? And that gives uh, you the number the number or whatever? Think, maybe, I'm not sure. Although we would have said Wix in front of it, right? Uh, not perfect about that. Uh, well, we should have, but we didn't. All right. So that is ours, right? The property is ours, yes. The behavior is not. So, yeah, we sh we could create we could open a feature request to call Wix IS major version, yada yada that has you know that is a number and write the custom action that strips off the number and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, number I sign. did that for .NET. Did you? Yeah, remember I added properties is .NET four six or later. Oh, did that that I didn't know that had pound signs on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Well, I mean, if it's a number, it has a pound. I, I'm, yeah, sure. So, so anyway, this is this is as expected, and this will not get fixed because we're not going to be able to change those. Um, but we could take a new feature to have a Wix IS major version, and do that because he's doing string comparisons. Right, right, right. So yeah. Returns true. I expect it because they are not strings, but you did have it strings. You put quote pound five quote. That's a string. <laughs> it just is. Now, granted, it's not going to get you any better to not put quotes around. Right. Yes. So, so yeah, this is by design, and we would have to take a feature to create a new Wix IS major version that doesn't have numbers on it, unless we want to turn this into the feature request. No. Because I've already started typing in the new feature. Awesome. I am good with that. But yeah, string comparisons don't work. Heat fails when interpreting path in an imported targets file. Okay. Worked fine with 3.9, huh? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh. Sorry. A little bit more data, people. Yeah, really. I don't remember. I don't I remember which project that imports a targets file that imports another targets file with this task. With this task. Is this a. I can't do this. Oh, it cannot load projects. I guess that makes sense. Ugh. Never mind. Um, are we missing some text here, maybe? Like, the the formatting is not good? And with this task, and it's just import, that's not a task. I'm wondering if there's like actually a task somewhere or something that we're missing. But I can't edit the issue, so I can barely get the mouse cursor to work. So I was wondering, can you take a look at the issue and see if maybe... Oh, some... oh, I see. I'm like, what? Yes. I couldn't understand what you were asking for. Right. So can you do an no. edit and... No, that's it? No. This is the whole thing? That's it. I think he's referring to the task as the import task. But that's not... Right. Right. Well, okay, it's, not, it's not a task. I don't it's an think import. it's a task, but yeah. The directive. <sighs> The project with the original targets file complies correctly with Visual Studio, but fails and uses a heat reference in an installer project. Worked fine with 3.9. No error messages. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> I have a lot more information, like what the errors are, what he's actually doing, things like that. Yeah. This is not helpful. <laughs> well, it's again, it's it, that error is cannot load project. So there's probably not much more. I don't disagree with you that this should have had more information on it, but a log probably will not give us a lot more detail here. What do you mean? What's the error? Heat fifty zero five cannot load project. Sorry, where are you seeing the error number? In the title. Oh. In the big bold text. When interpreting a path, interpret by the Cannot load project, huh? I mean, I think we should still ask for more logging. I'm and how wondering. about a smaller repo so that we could actually do this? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and which heat? What's he doing? What's he using no. a heat reference? Project reference? Uh, heat file? Heat directory? Yeah, like, how about a lot more information? <laughs> so, we'll come back. All right. Want more, 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 want more information. Anything else? Oof. This is an hour. I think next week we'll pick it up and 
we'll evaluate a couple things that we found today and see what we get in a week and then go back over 310 and discuss it then. It's kind of my thinking. One more week and take a snapshot where we're at and see if we're releasing in the next couple weeks or not based on how these bugs come back. Yeah, I'm I'm a little concerned about the heat stuff. Um, I I'm concerned because we're, we're looking at some big complaints, and we're kind of like, okay, well, we think you're having other problems. Yeah, that's true. So, it, but it's a little concerning because we did take a change, and you know, we don't have a lot of people working in heat, and yeah. And it's really squirrely, and it fails in lots of different ways. Yeah, because it's already just, it's just a mess. So yeah. Um, so I'm a little concerned. So far, I'm I'm feeling better now than I was before. Because yeah, before I, I was kind of like really, really, really nervous about heat. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think these things are related to anything we changed. But yeah, that's what yeah, you said. Yeah, I, I, I right, don't think. I agree with the code them. was inside heat, and this stuff is like cannot find project. Like that's not, yeah, needs to, yeah. I think people are doing stuff, updating their projects, screwing them up, and then blaming us without even looking. <sighs> Certainly not looking very hard. It's like, oh, I got a new drop of Wix. It must be their fault. Oh, I integrated it wrong. Oh, I guess it was my fault. Wrong. Anyway. In the meantime, I upgraded OS and Visual Studio and .NET and. Yeah, probably. I changed my whole world. Oh, must be Wix's fault. Um, anything else? All right. Well, that was a lot of bugs, but they mostly came in like a week. Did they both? They come across two days. Oh, this is open just today. All right. Well, I don't feel too bad about that then. Yeah. Five days, thirteen days ago. So, all right. We probably got what, maybe ten each. Each time ish. So, that was a lot of bugs in one go around. Yes, it was. It's been a while since we've done that. I don't miss. Do we keep any? I don't think we kept many. Like a couple, but. Yeah, a couple. Yeah. Nothing in 310. Nothing directly. in 310. Yet. Uh, no, nothing that was, well, nothing that was itself broken in 310 except maybe this heat bug. This 4850. And then this, oh, okay. yeah. this regression thing I'm worried about. I'm going to go step through the burn code to make sure that we didn't regress, because if we did, that's coming out, which means I have to write okay. some code, too. Well, and this, I think, is Nlog, so that's just whatever. And then this is a better user experience, and this is a, yeah, that's the way that works, and it would be cool if we did something smarter or did the extra work to make that work better. So, yeah. And then the other bugs we accepted are put in the appropriate places already. All righty then. So Sean typing something. Ah, <laughs> uh, so Sean thinks four oh. three nine is a bug that we don't have, which you know wouldn't surprise me because this would not be the first time that he submitted a bug that we punted the pull request for. It say here you should do this, and we're like, no, we're not taking that crap. And then he has a bug in his world. So um. Yeah, I don't see any changes. I didn't remember any changes like that. If I find a change like that, I'm going to be really upset that I missed it in code review because it's exactly the kind of stuff that I should catch in code review and not let in. It's bad design. Um, so anyway, we will, we will. I will take a look. I will spend the hour or whatever one of these nights, and I will dig into it. And I hope Sean, you are right. And I didn't want to say anything out loud, but. I was hoping that's what it was, too. Cool. We talked about bugs all day. And we want to talk about Hey, Sean, John, neither one of you guys have gone out and found me images or something that you thought would make good backgrounds that I sent to Wix Devs. Uh, for those people who don't know what I was talking about, um, I sent out a request for background images to show cool to show off cool stuff. Here, let me bring up a website that does it. Uh, he says modestly. I'm just saying it does it. I think it looks good. I think we should have something similar to it. it. Not the same, but similar to it. Something that does it. So background images, I think, help make the site look cool. Like it does can really tie together 
a whole site or whatever, a theme. And clearly we have a theme at Fire Giant of this light and movement and those kinds of things. Um, so thinking it might be cool if we had something like that. Now, whatever it would be. And I mentioned, you know, you could do kittens and puppies and cute stuff like that, but it might be better to be something on target with Wix. So anyway, go out there, find some things. I, I was curious to see what people come up I got It was like crickets when I posted that. I was kind of disappointed. I thought people would be more excited about going out and finding their pictures. But, alas, no creativity right now. John can't Rogers. even hear us right now, so he's probably not responding at all. He's just watching and go, what are they bringing up this thing for? <laughs> anyway, so I've I've put it I've put it in the in the call, um, and that means Bob will hopefully put it in the meeting notes for this week, and we'll see if we get a little bit more attention on it. Again, well, now that I remember to do that, sure. Uh, so all right, that's all I got. I think we'll call it a day. Certainly was a fun-filled full full day. A, did I say fun-filled? I meant to say a full day. Fun to get the bugs down. All right, we'll be back down to what two bugs, something like that, in the end. I don't know. I have to go through and make sure I've cleaned up all the ones that I have still yep. open. Yep. Um. Yeah. Good stuff. So, all right. Well, until next time, you guys take it easy, and uh, we'll do this all again. Hopefully, talking about Wix three ten and finishing it out. I'll see you guys next week. Later. <laughs>